What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Well, guys, the Colts now have filled out a few more positions on their offensive staff, most notably their offensive coordinator position by hiring former Jaguars quarterbacks coach Jim Bob Cooter. Now, he is a guy that has a ton of experience in the league, Derek. I mean, he started out, actually, ironically enough, in Indianapolis. Um, He started off uh, in Indianapolis in 2009 as an offensive assistant. He spent three years in Indy. Then he took on a couple different positions. Uh, most notably, uh, he's had some offensive coordinator experience. Uh, he had, I believe it was two or three years in Detroit where he was the offensive coordinator. Um, I think he started off as the quarterback's coach, if I'm not mistaken. And then he took on the offensive coordinator coach uh, in a role you know, before he turned 30. And so, you know, he's 38 right now. So still very young, a very young coordinator that seems to be on the rise from a lot of people and what they've said. And obviously his most recent stop in Jacksonville um, and his work with Trevor Lawrence and what Trevor Lawrence was able to do. um, You know, it's very, it's a very interesting one. Uh, I think a really good hire from all metrics. And, you know, ironically enough, Derek, we we had a video that was going to come out now we may have to scrap it or really modify it when we were talking about some of the things that Shane Steichen had to do. And I asked you the question. I said, what do you want in an offensive coordinator? Would you rather have a guy that can call plays? Or would you rather have a guy, I believe I said that could develop a you know rookie quarterback or something like that, or maybe more scheming is maybe what I'm thinking of. Um, but, you know, the, the good thing with a Jim Bob Cooter is he's had experience calling plays in Detroit. And also he's worked with a young quarterback as well. So it seems like you're getting a guy that's very knowledgeable about the game and has worked with some really good quarterbacks as well. Obviously, Peyton Manning just started. He's worked with Matthew Stafford. He worked with Trevor Lawrence most recently. So it seems like on paper, Jim Bob Cooter, even though the name, everybody makes fun of the name, everybody (laughs) thinks it's hilarious, but from just a coordinator experience, seems like a very strong hire here for Shane Steichen in Indy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at it from every different angle, you know, again, some of the quarterbacks that he has worked with, you know, Peyton Manning, Matthew Stafford, you know, a couple different big names. And then, of course, you know, the most recent thing was, you know, the development of a Trevor Lawrence, you know, that is a very important aspect of this. And it's very clear that Shane Steichen and the Indianapolis Colts are really putting together an offensive staff that is focused on developing these players, meaning that, um, again, they feel very confident in some of the players that they have currently, and they're trying to further advance their development and see where they can go from this point. I think Ballard may be looking to see who can he keep around uh, when these second contracts start coming up and who is still falling behind and who's going to not be able to keep up with everything. But of course, this all leads back to, again, wanting to get the quarterback that you're wanting to develop. You're bringing in uh, Bob Cooter, who has you know, had that developing experience with quarterbacks. Obviously, Shane Steichen developing quarterbacks. You've hired a few different position coaches already in the last few days that are going to start really developing these groups of positions of players that are really going to start building from this offense. So, I mean, overall, I mean, from what I've seen so far from some of the uh, – from some of the coaches that Shane Steichen has helped bring in so far, I'm really liking the potential of what kind of development these guys can bring. Yeah, and it seemed like he was, uh, Jim Bob Cooter was a very hot commodity. Um, he also had interviews with the Panthers and Buccaneers for their offensive coordinator position um, as well. Um, and obviously, he, he has a connection with Steichen from his time in Philadelphia, although it was brief, him and Steichen had a connection point there. And so, yeah, I just look at it overall, and it, it seems like, you know, the Colts got a very coveted offensive guy here um, that could really, you talked about, really help develop that rookie quarterback that we're all thinking the Colts are going to draft there. And, you know, that's critical, I think. And then we also talked about, like, the play calling standpoint. Like, if Shane Steichen determines, right, right now he's going to call the plays. But if he determines, like Nick Sirianni determined, hey, you know, I want to pass something off. You know, I feel like I can pass off that kind of role. Jim Bob Cooter has experience doing it. 
So I think that's great. It's like a nice fallback option to have, like a guy that can do that as well. So, I mean, I think that's just a great thing to have kind of your back pocket if it ever would get to that point and Steichen wants to develop maybe more on the scheming side of things and he wants to maybe hand off and delegate some of those things. So uh, that is definitely a thing of note, and I think it's it's finally nice to – to have an answer for, you know, who's going to be the offensive coordinator for the Colts. But I wanted to also briefly touch on some other positions the Colts did fill. Uh, one also one today, uh, a guy that's very familiar also with Indianapolis, Tom Manning, coming back as a tight ends coach for Indianapolis. Um, he was previously, I believe, um, he was with Indianapolis and actually was worked with Mo Ali Cox. Eric Ebron and all those guys, Jack Doyle as well in that 2018 season. And, you know, obviously having Andrew Luck is a big plus and a very big asset, but, you know, he was critical and, and, you know, Eric Ebron having double digit touchdowns that year. Like he was working with him. And so uh, a guy that's very familiar with the Colts, obviously the Colts very familiar with him. Uh, what are your thoughts on Tom Manning coming back as the tight ends coach? I believe he was the offensive coordinator for Cincinnati, but now comes back into this role. Yeah, he was the offensive coordinator for uh, Cincinnati, and no question about it. I mean, what, what I just can tell you from watching a lot of Cincinnati games, uh, Cincinnati is very big on getting their tight ends involved. And Josh Wiley, who was their main tight end, he's looking to get drafted this year, might end up being a, a fifth or sixth round uh, tight end coming out uh, in this draft you know, had a big shoes to fill. And, you know, he really has developed a lot from when he was a sophomore to where he is now. So, you know, his, Tom Manning definitely can develop people very well. And like you said, of course, Andrew Luck throwing you the football uh, to Eric Ebron back in 2018 clearly was the, one of the biggest motivators to this whole thing. But of course, you know, Eric Ebron was a mess before and a mess after. So you kind of in that situation where, you know, a couple different people came in and really helped develop him. And like you said, with Molly Cox too, who was just coming into the league, you know, Molly Cox did have, had a pretty fluid transition coming into the NFL was able to showcase some of his abilities and was able to do very well blocking wise. And of course we know with Jack Doyle, it always helps to have that sort of thing. So Again, just another very qualified guy who has had both college and NFL experience up to this point, you know, has gone around the league a little bit. And uh, I definitely th think that was a very solid hire for, again, what I was talking about before with getting guys involved and developing them. Uh, a fantastic hire for a group of young players that you have in that building right now with Ogletree, Jelani Woods, and Kylan Granson. Only a matter of time until we see what kind of development and what kind of positive gains these three players are going to have. Yeah, very excited to see. I mean, Tom Manning was, and, and that'll be interesting to see what happens with Mo's future now, since Tom Manning and, and Mo Ali Cox do have a little bit of history together, right? Does he want to keep him? You know, maybe they do work with that, rework that contract in some way, or do the Colts, does he, does he just look at that and be like, look, I love Mo, but Jelani is just another level, you know? Who knows what, what that's going to look like? But yeah, I, that's just an interesting thing of note. And I just, I'm intrigued to see how the ways that he uses these tight ends. Because, yeah, I mean, in 2018, I know the Colts yeah, obviously had the quarterback situation figured out, but the ways they use their tight ends was just next level. Like, they just they got their tight ends consistently in positions to win um, and do really well. And, and and also people forget Jack Doyle was hurt for a good chunk of that season, and the tight ends continued to just, you know, rise to the occasion. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy to have Tom Manning back. He's a great coach, and, you know, now he has some OC experience as well. And, you know, he, he like you said, he he's – been around enough with Indianapolis that you do feel like he's going to be a guy that's really going to be a you know help with that development aspect because the Colts offense is extremely young, isn't it, Derek? We've talked yes. about this. This offense is young, they're raw, and they need some real good head, you know, some real good coordinators here to help develop them. I, I really do feel like that. You know, it was almost like how the Colts did on defense last year. You know, when they hired you know Richard Smith and Ron Miles and all these guys that have been in the league for. 20 plus years as coordinators. It seems like the Colts are trying to maybe get back to that a little bit. Maybe not to the, to the level of that, but like, you know, getting some guys that have a little bit more experience. Like, none of these guys are 
first time, you know, guys at their position. Neither of these guys are. Manning, obviously, you know, has been with Indy at that position. And then, you know, obviously Jim Bob Cooter's had experience at offensive coordinator as well. So it seems like the Colts are getting more guys that have been in the league, but also, you know, are really, really good in terms of the development piece, which is absolutely huge for this unit. The one last guy we didn't talk about, and it was a little bit earlier, a couple of days ago, we, we really didn't hear, like, what was the role for him? Um, and, and that was Giants, I guess now former Giants running backs coach, DeAndre Smith. Now, he was uh, you know, with the Giants last year. His only time, um, it was his first year actually in the NFL at the level of the, the running backs coach. He spent previous time at a couple different you know, collegiate programs and stuff like that. But he was really big in uh, getting Saquon ba- Barkley back to looking like an elite running back. I mean, he obviously Saquon Barkley is a, an elite talent, but you know, what he was able to do with him, getting him in the end zone 20 plus times. I mean, this this seems like a really solid hire overall. Um, a guy that's going to get the most uh, out of his players. And, you know, obviously we know what Shane Sykin and the Eagles are able to do with Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, and that whole group. And so just to have a guy like him who Shane Sykin saw twice last year, you know, they saw them twice last year playing in the same division and what he was able to get out of Saquon Barkley and this Giants running game, including Daniel Jones as well on the ground. Um, the Giants were, I believe, top five in terms of yards per you know yards per attempt in average. So it definitely seems like a really good hire from that standpoint as well. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, again, the the guy that's really young in the process and how he's doing things. But you're right. I mean, Saquon Barkley finally got back healthy this year and he had a good coach teaching him how to play football again and, you know, getting him in good positions and developing him into a guy that doesn't turn the ball over, a guy that was exploding this year. I mean, Saquon Barkley looked like the Saquon Barkley that we all presumed and, you know, for a the first half of the season was looking like the best running back in all of the NFL. So, I mean, it really helps. And you're right. If Shane, if anyone knows uh, DeAndre Smith, it would be Shane Steichen who has had time to be able to see what the New York giants have done uh, with Saquon Barkley. So, Again, I, I can't complain really with a lot of these uh, coordinators and position coaches. I really can't complain as of this moment, Cody. I mean, it, uh, a lot of guys that have good developmental skills in uh, teaching these players that they've been involved in and all understand their roles really well. So I'm happy with it. Yeah, and the connection there for Steichen and Smith was actually all the way back in 2009 at UNLV. Yeah. Uh, Smith was the running backs coach for the Rebels, and then Steichen was an offensive uh, graduate assistant. So they have some connection from that long ago. So they've known each other for quite a long time. So uh, that that's definitely an interesting one there that the Colts decided. Now they filled three of their offensive positions, the most important one, obviously, offensive coordinator. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see, man, who else they fill with, obviously, wide receivers coach. Does Reggie Wayne stick around? Do they decide to go in a different direction? Um, you know, what's going to happen with a couple others, like the offensive line coach? I know Roy Ivestan, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's kind of the front runner for that offensive line coach uh, position. And so hopefully we get to see that, you know, here in the next couple hours or days. Um, and hopefully we kind of get it, get a sense of where the Colts are going to go in that direction. And then obviously the defense and the special teams, what's going to happen there. Are they going to stick with Gus Bradley and Bubba Ventrone, or are they going to try to go in a different direction? So I don't know, man, but as far as it goes, I think the most important piece on the offense is now figured out. The Colts now have uh, Jim Bob Cooter as their offensive coordinator, and I think if it wasn't already like pretty much a lock, the Colts are going to take a quarterback at number four or trade up for a quarterback or certainly their first pick, whatever it looks like, is going to be a quarterback. I mean, you get a guy like Jim Bob Cooter who has worked with young quarterbacks. So it, it pretty much to me, like if there was any question at all, I really think this – even more emphasizes the Colts understanding that they're going to have to develop somebody. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a big development piece in that and that's critical. And so I, I love that. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I think that's go. That's it guys for this episode. We're talking about uh, just some hires the Colts have made here. Let me know your thoughts overall on these hires on the offensive coordinator, tight ends and running backs coach. And obviously we'll keep you guys updated a couple of other coaches and then obviously on the defense and special team side if the Colts do decide to stick with the guys they currently have or if they're going to go a different direction we'll let you know all that stuff but thank you guys so much for tuning in really appreciate all your support and as always guys go Colts yeah.